What's good, everybody? I don't know if I can say that's a coin channel. How are you doing, everybody? This is uh, Charles Morgan from Coin Week. And uh, we've been streaming uh, this week a few topics that I think are important for collectors. Uh, that is uh, how to properly store your coins and the best available products on the market. Uh, how to magnify your coins, looking at some of the uh, most popular and uh, highest uh, quality loops and magnifiers on the market. And today I will uh, finish this uh, short series of uh, streams uh, with uh, a, a video about uh, essential reference books or coin collecting books that you need uh, in order to succeed in the hobby. Um, there is no perfect book in the coin collecting market. Um, and uh, I'm going to give you an honest uh, breakdown of uh, my feelings uh, related to each of these books. Uh, some of the books may have a, a slight criticism to them, but I would not present any of these to you uh, if I did not recommend that you purchase them. Um, Coin Week has a series of essays about uh, books as they've come out into the market that we've published in the last few years called First Read. Um, I think even our editor's choice, which is uh, very seldom given to books, uh, has been given to books where we do find things here or there that we find uh, not, uh, not you know, to our standards. Um, there are some books that uh, have come out in the numismatic marketplace that we have not reviewed um, and, uh, and chose not to review because we didn't, uh, we didn't want to... Uh, we didn't want to put anything out about them because we felt that they weren't up to any of our standards and, and we wouldn't want to recommend our readers to invest the money and time uh, to read these books. Now, that doesn't mean that every book that has been published or written about on Queen Week is a bad book. It's just we've run into situations where we're like, you know, don't like this book at all. We're not going to we're not going to promote it. So so with that said, uh, the, any criticism I make for any of these books or the way these books are put together is meant to just be a, a, a light critique. It's not a, a, a damning uh, statement. Um, I wouldn't show you a book if I didn't think you should buy it or read it or put it in your collection, but I do want to make you aware of things that I see. And these are my own personal feelings. They don't reflect the staff. The staff could have their own opinions. Um, and there are certainly not critiques that the writers, most of these writers and publishers, do as much as they can with the limited amount of time and money that is available to put these reference books together. So having put all of that out in the uh, open, and if there's any uh, uh, biases or things that I have that uh, are, might, might seem like a conflict of interest, I will let you know. Uh, I have been involved in the publication of a few of these books, uh, either behind the scenes or uh, be, you know, through some sort of collaboration uh, with the authors or the editors. Uh, so the first one is The Essential Book. This is the book that got me started into coins. Um, this is the, uh, the Red Book, the guidebook to United States Coins originally published in 1947 by uh, R.S. Yeoman, published by Whitman every year since. This is the 73rd edition. Uh, my first red book uh, was purchased for me by my grandmother, Ruth, uh, and uh, it was the 1986 edition. Uh, this is actually one you can't get in stores uh, because this is the presentation edition given to the red book contributors, of which uh, I have been off and on for the past five or six years. It was signed by Jeff Garrett, and uh, you know every contributor gets one every year. It's sort of the badge of honor you get for uh, contributing to the Red Book. Now, the Red Book is an all-in-one type of book. It has uh, prices, uh, of course. It has uh, uh, copious illustrations, uh, and very basic, although more more uh, detailed than you would think, uh, descriptions of pretty much every coin. Uh, colonial coin and many metals and tokens uh, uh, struck uh, in the United States since the uh, since the English uh, colonization began. And uh, my only criticism with the Red Book, if you're an advanced or sophisticated collector, is the Red Book's pricing uh, 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 does not accurately reflect the certified coin market. Uh, if you want a, a, a red book that is uh, larger and more sophisticated, uh, in the last few years, Whitman has put out this monster uh, called the Mega Red Book. Now, you can see how big this thing is. This is a telephone book uh, size thing. It's, it's very large, has a retail price of 
about fifty dollars, although on our our website and, and some other places you can get it for less than that. Uh, the thing about the Mega Red Book is that uh, the photographs of the coins are larger, and uh, the detailed information about them is uh, is expanded. You see uh, ex an expanded grading uh, 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 information. Uh, and uh, this information is not precise to any particular grade you would see in the certified market. For instance, for the 1834 crosslet for uh, 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 gold coin here, the $5 half eagle, uh, their grades uh, explain AU50, 53, 55, and 58 in one paragraph. Uh, and uh, you're basically... Uh, uh, given you know a sliding interpretation of what these grades are and uh, if you're buying a coin that the the, the price can go from four thousand to ten thousand dollars in that scale I think you'd probably want something more detailed than what can be fit in this book considering it, it covers the same quality of coins that the the regular red book covers but in a more expanded format as far as the pricing is concerned uh, the pricing here is slightly expanded uh, and, and does take into account some auctions which they give you a precise auction data for uh, below the price grid. But uh, the Red Book is not to be um, mistaken for a, uh, a, a quick trip to the uh, Heritage uh, or Stax Bowers auction uh, prices realized list or uh, maybe PCGS uh, coin facts or uh, NGC's uh, Coin Explorer to see what the different uh, online auctions publicly realize prices for coins and the different certified grades have been. I, I would recommend more than anything before you uh, enter into the coin market if price is a consideration that you're very, very specific about that you look at online resources before you go to print. However, uh, online resources only tell one part of the story and uh, and I think that uh, a combination of your online resource and these you know veritable forests uh, fonts of uh, information uh, is is how you want to approach uh, collecting coins now from coins to paper money we go and there are two uh, resources I use uh, primarily uh, for US coins uh, the simple one <clears throat> is uh, Whitman's United States Paper Money. You can find this in pretty much any bookstore that has a hobby section for coins or your coin, local coin dealer may even uh, stock these in. Uh, if you have a brick and mortar retail shop, I recommend you, you pick up a case of these so you can inform your customers and, and hopefully that means you sell more currency. Uh, this, is, uh, this is affordable. It's an under $20 book. It has copious illustrations. Uh, good quality illustrations, uh, probably the largest uh, illustrations of paper money of, of the two books I'm going to reference. And you get, uh, you know, pricing table, some uh, printing quantities, uh, and it's fairly well laid out. It is uh, Arthur and Ira Freeberg uh, are responsible for it, but they also have, and I, I actually uh, use this more, uh, more often, uh, they have an expanded version of this, uh, which is much more detailed. Uh, there's a hardback and a softback, and you're paying between, I think, $40 and $60. This is the hardback. It is the $60 version, but I find that it's a little more durable. Uh, again, you get the, the photographs. Much of the same information, but I do feel like the way this is laid out is, uh, is, is more, uh, more authoritative, uh, and there's more room for them to expand some of the information. Um, so these are the two books for currency, and they, they do have a section of, of, for Confederate uh, notes. Uh, they have, uh, you know, small size, large size uh, national bank notes, uh, and uh, the, 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 the book starts with uh, colonial currency, and there's a section on that, although that's not as well illustrated as I would like it to be. Uh, but anyway, those are the two books on paper money that I recommend. Uh, that you use, and they have become they have been very helpful for us as we've written a number of articles on paper money uh, over the years for Coin Week. Now, another important facet of coin uh, collecting, and I think it's one of the main pillars of coin collecting, is to to understand 
the fundamentals of coin grading. Um, it's a, it's 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 a sad it's a sad statement I think on the hobby that most collectors have uh, have not uh, kept up their their precise understanding of coin grading and have allowed the industry to sort of use where the market is to uh, shift the definitions of certain grades. Uh, this we call coin inflation or, or grade inflation, I guess, and it has run rampant in the coin industry for the last 20 or 30 years. It was a gradual uh, slide from MS65 being the coveted gem grade to MS65 today being a middling grade where the better grade coins are grading 6, 7, 7 plus, 8. And uh, so this, this shift has meant that the the differences between coins and the lower tiers of the mint state spectrum up to mint has become more nebulous and more interchangeable. And uh, where a Jimmy coin in the early 80s would have uh, you know graded MS65 when it was offered at an auction today would be like a seven plus or an eight or with a CAC sticker even. So we've seen it. We've seen a complete redefinition of these grades. So I think understanding the grades is important, especially if you collect circulated coins. Uh, I find, to be honest, that uh, when you're grading a mint set coin, a mint state coin, you're looking at you know strike and luster. You're looking at originality of the surfaces. You're looking for hits, and dings, uh, how strong the coin was. Uh, you know how nice the planchet was, and how the defects in the planchet are covered up by the strike. Uh, and but when you get into the circulated grades, you're talking about which details can be omitted, where is the typical wear pattern, uh, and uh, what what kind of damage naturally occurs to a coin when it circulates. What color does a coin take on as it circulates? Like how can you tell a coin's been cleaned and then just retone later? Uh, all of these things are very important, and I find that it's even more important to know these factors. Uh, for collecting than it is the mint state side of the spectrum because most of the raw coins you are going to find where you're going to cherry pick those varieties or you're going to get those 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 circulation pools if they, they even exist anymore you get a, a, a couple old BU rolls of uh, silver coins um, it's easy to figure out how many hits are there but once you start getting into you know, the circulated grades, like knowing which ones are the, you know, extra fine, extra fine, 45, very fine, very good. Uh, th these are these are harder. And, I, and I've even heard from professional graders at the services that much harder to grade circulated coins in mint state. Uh, a lot of guys don't have the time to sit there and like split hairs over, you know, okay, there's there's 80% of the wheat stocks are left on this uh, 1909 SVDB. You know, they just don't have the they don't have the time. And uh, and certainly they're not getting the preponderance of the coins they're, they're grading are in mint state. So and uh, I'm going to go over these these books in the order of my precedent, uh, the order of precedence that I feel they, they deserve from the one the passable to outstanding. And uh, so the first one I, I, I look at here, which I think is passable, and, I, and as a grading book, I, I'm much more interested in the perspective than actually how it comes across. This is uh, Q. David Bowers, Grading Coins by Photographs, second edition, published by Whitman. It's a spiral back book, so it's fairly sturdy. And what uh, Bowers does and the way he presents it is he breaks things down series by series. There's information about sharpness and the history. And then he goes coin by coin uh, through the different grades, starting uh, with uh, a mint state 60 to 70. Remember I was saying? That's a, that's a very important spectrum, but you only get it in one paragraph. This is why I'm going from this book to others. I think that he short changes uh, some of these grades and focuses primarily on the lower circulated grades. And that's one of the places you might want to definitely hear. But let me give you an example. Uh, hopefully this doesn't violate uh, fair use. But uh, for, very, for a shield nickel, for instance, for very fine, obverse, the frame details and leaves show more wear with much leaf detail gone. The shield stripes show more wear and some vertical lines will begin to blend together. And of course you read this as a progression. You know, and so you follow that progression, and then you're within 10 points, two grades, and that's that's what you get for two grades. The photographs are fairly good. Uh, they are, uh, they look like they're about coin size. Uh, so uh, if you're used to looking at a coin through a loop, of course, this uh, sack dollar is not coin size. That's a 
certainly not a coin size. But anyway, so I would say I would give this, this is a passable coin grading book, but uh, Bauer's perspective is interesting. Uh, and uh, as the Dean of Numismatics, it's always worth checking out what he has to say. Uh, moving on to something a little bit better, and this uh, again, uh, edited by Ken Brissett, who's now retired, but also uh, influenced by Bowers, uh, uh, who has uh, written the narrative. Another Whitman title, this is the, uh, the ANAs, the official American Numismatic Association Grading Standards for United States Coin. This is a, another spiral edition. And uh, here you see the breakdowns grade by grade. And this this page it's proof 65 64 63 62 you talk they talk about natural coloration of coins deceptive practices things you need to look at this is really written as a as a technical uh, guide uh, with uh, some good consumer advocacy uh, points uh, brought to bear here I'm going to go back if I can to the shield nickel that we were talking about in the Bowers book and I want to read to you uh, how they treat the same issue the same grade we are looking at the extra fine uh no no we're looking at very fine 30 to 20 uh and uh they write very fine 30 being choice very fine 20 being typical you see the narrative is actually smaller but i believe the coin photographs are larger uh, for very fine 30 uh they say leaves show nearly full detail vertical lines of shield are worn but sharp and separated some horizontal lines and shield are missing. So that's, in my opinion, more concise, uh, a little easier to follow. The pictures are larger. Uh, and again, all of the front matter of this book to tell you about uh, eye appeal, deceptive practices, things you need to look out for uh, when grading coins, uh, I think is invaluable. And this goes through the entire US series. And uh, so that is, a, that is another book. I think this book retails for $20. They're roughly the same price. And you can, again, you can usually find them online a little cheaper, including at our supply site. The best, in my opinion, grading book on the market it is also the most expensive, but it's not like hugely expensive. It's about double the price. And it's published by our friends at CoinWorld. This is CoinWorld's Making the Grade. Uh, Beth Deicher edited this book. This is the third edition. Where Coin World's Making the Grade makes great strides over what the other publications did is that the coin photographs are much larger. Okay, uh, They break down uh, color for the copper coins. Um, when it comes to that, that shield nickel we were talking about, I'm going to read what they have to say. So you can see, so we're going to talk about the same coin, coin after coin. This is the page with the shield nickels. Okay. So for very fine 20, the coin world book says, moderate wear is evident, but more details emerging on design elements. Obverse, more details show in shield and frame, cross and laurel leaves. Letters on motto are bolder. Reverse, numeral five is bolder and more details of stars evident. Letters and legends are distinct. So you see in that, not only are they showing you uh, where to look for precise descriptions, the coin uh, photograph is larger, and you can see in that photograph exactly the things they're talking about. I think they did a great job with this book. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of history about the different coin series, uh, and then they are showing the grades. Like for this, the flowing hair half dime page, MS 60, 63, 64, and 65. Now they're not going to have all the eccentric grades, you know, none of the plus grades or anything like that. But it's very good. Another feature of the book I like is they have these uh, coin wear heat maps. They're in full color and they show where the typical wear patterns form on these coins as they circulate. I think this is very important as you're learning how to grade because you want to look for the problem areas first, especially if you're trying to tell the difference between a circulated and uncirculated coin. So there is the, the coin rolled book. I think it, it retails for $40. You can get it slightly cheaper online and on our site, but that's the retail price. Now, the best uh, coin book does not compare, in my opinion, to a free product that you can get. And that is uh, the PCGS uh, uh, photo uh, grading uh, app that they offer. Uh, Phil Arnold at PCGS uh, is uh, a, a, one of the finer photographers of numismatic products uh, working in the industry. So you get to see not only his pho photography, uh, but you also get to, to see how coins are graded by PCGS's standards. 
PCGS and NGC are both top tier grading services. They have their own eccentric standards that are, slight, that are slightly different uh, at each company. And uh, so you get to see how PCGS views uh, the coin grading uh, spectrum and they show they step it up with great photography and it's free. Now, I would look at that. I would look at these. I would take in all the information they're trying to give you because there's years and years of experience here. So sometimes the best information doesn't cost you anything, like like CoinWeek.com doesn't cost you anything. But uh, but yeah, but seriously, folks, uh, these are the books that uh, I would have in my collection or I have in my bookshelf that I would use. Um, and another thing uh, uh, Frederick Brandt points out in his comment he just made is that uh, uh, older auction catalogs and current auction catalogs couldn't agree more. The best uh, purchase you'll ever make is to go on eBay after an auction's done and buy a major auction catalog for pennies on the dollar and read everything in there and see the beautiful photographs and see and see what's going on. Because for the bigger coins, they'll have full page photographs. Now, let's move on to World Coins, another uh, great segment of the market. Um, and I'm going to explain uh, what's going on with Krause a little bit. Um, Krause, for years, has made these robust catalogs uh, covering world coins from the 17th century to the present. Uh, this is the first, uh, the seventh edition of the 1601 to 1700 book. Uh, when Hubert and I were writing our book, that's coming out in about a month and a half on uh, modern world coins. You know, this this book was a, a, an essential element. The world coins 1901 to 2000, and uh, and the thing about these books is uh, they have pretty much defined world coin collecting in the American market for generations. Uh, but if you look at the size of these books, um, you're looking at tens of thousands of pages. Okay. And uh, right now, it used to be George Kuhaj who has uh, left Krause uh, before they were sold. Uh, and now uh, I'm not sure if it's Thomas Michael or who the, the, the who's staffing these books anymore as they've been purchased by another publisher. But no one person and no number of contributors is going to keep the pricing in this book consistent, accurate, and reflecting real-time pricing uh, as, as, as seen by uh, countless coin, uh, coin sellers across the globe, countless auctions, American auctions, European auctions, Asian auctions. It's just not possible. And so if you look at these books as price guides, which is what they're kind of sold as, uh, you're, you're sort of not getting a good price guide. You're getting a fantastic catalog uh, uh, with, again, a, a, very, a standardized uh, system, the Krauss numbering system. You're getting uh, pictures and a little bit of biographical information. But if you're a series specialist, you're out of luck <laughs> because uh, there's, there's far uh, deeper uh, writing and other things. This is really an overview. If, or if you get a coin, you don't know what it is, but you're like, I think that's Guernsey. I think that's, I think that's a German state coin or whatever. This is a great resource. The only resource I would recommend for like looking things up if you don't know what they are, if you have a general idea of the date. As for a price guide, again, you have to go to auction catalogs. You have to talk to knowledgeable dealers. There is nothing in print that I can tell, and not in the European market, not in the U.S. market, that like satisfies my definition of accurate, up-to-date scientific method pricing for world coins. Um, getting a little deep into coins, and uh, I would say and the, the Whitman has put out a few good books for uh, Canadian coins and for Mexican coins. For Mexican coins, I recommend two books uh, right now for the uh, generalist, and that is uh, Don Bailey and uh, Lois Bailey's Whitman Encyclopedia of Mexican Money, Volumes 1 and 2. Volume 2 is covers 1905 to date. Uh, it is essentially structured like the Red Book, but with uh, Mexican coins. Of course, Don Bailey has passed away a, a, a few years ago, but uh, Mexican coins were his life's work, and th there is no better reference in English, probably not even in Spanish, for Mexican coins than this. Um, getting into paper money, I think... A great opportunity for collectors who want to are a little bored of uh, maybe collecting uh, uh, coins that they think they're too pricey or collecting U.S. paper money. Uh, a great affordable area to enter into, full of variety, is modern world paper money. Here, again, 
don't go for the price guide element, but for a catalog and a visual depiction, uh, Krause Standard Catalog of World Paper Money, and this is the 25th edition, I think this is the most recent. They're, they're behind, they're gonna probably skip a year, I think, before the next ones come out, but, but this would be the, the book I would buy. Um, of course, uh, for variety hunters, you have specialist books. You know, I recommend the Cherry Pickers Guide for, for generalists or just looking for modern uh, coins. I've asked them for a, a few times if they would consider uh, not putting the classic coins in the Cherry Pickers Guide and just do modern coins so they can fit more of them in there. It's a very political process what coins get in Cherry Pickers Guide because they're weighing how much space they have. There's new varieties that are found and they're trying to put varieties in the book that gauge collector interest. I think we're waiting for the next uh, edition of Bill Fiva's Cherry Pickers Guide uh, and I think you'd be lucky to find one in stock right now because most of the last print run has sold out. Um, and then if you want to get into some other series, I think if you're collecting uh, commemorative coins, for instance, and this book's probably out of print, but uh, you have the, the Whitman Bauer series red book on uh, commemorative coins, which is good for the someone getting into it. If you want a little deeper information, there is Anthony Swiatek's Encyclopedia of Commemorative Coins of the United States, uh, which is, uh, I think this is like a $150 book. You might be able to find this, this gem. Um, some of the corniest writing you'll ever see in numismatics, mostly because Walter Breen. But uh, Silver and Gold Commemorative Coins by Swiatek and Breen. This was published in the... Uh, the late 80s. Uh, it was under um, First Coinvestors. There's a lot of really bogus pricing information, but as far as the entertainment value and the uh, information about the commemorative coin programs, uh, you can get much of what you see in Swiatek's encyclopedia written in a much looser, kind of more frivolous manner in the, in the older reference. Uh, and you can get, the, you, you might even get this, this book for like eight or ten dollars, and it's full of information. Um, there's also uh, out of print, far out of print, Bowers had a much bigger volume of commemorative coins uh, that he published, I, I guess, when he was with Bowers and Marina. Um, another book recently that I think is really great, if you collect uh, gold coins of the New Orleans Mint, you know, Doug Winter has another standard reference. Doug Winter is, Doug Winter is probably one of the, outside of uh, Q. David Bowers, probably one of the hardest working coin dealer writers in the industry. He's, he's, he's the guy for crusty old gold, classic U.S. gold. Doug Winter is the guy who has most of the information and has published it. Uh, we publish Doug's blogs all the time on Coin Week, but this is a great book that came out recently. Uh, the EAC's copper grading uh, book is, uh, you might have to go to the EAC to get a copy. They're probably very limited. The EAC has maintained their grading standards for about 60 or 70 years. And, uh, and this book articulates it in a way much clearer than anything I've ever read before. Also, this is a specialist book. I mean, we're talking probably around $100 for this book. And uh, then if you just can't get enough coins and you want to learn more about the history, uh, you might want to find this book or a book, so, uh, a modern printing of this book. This is Numismatic Art in America. It will explain uh, a lot about why our coins throughout the years look the way they look. This is by Cornelius Vermeule, a very uh, notable, very wealthy coin collector who uh, was active in the early and mid 20th century. Um, this is this is basically written as a collegiate text. Uh, again, not for everybody, but if you're really fascinated about the art and the history of, of, of rep the representation of liberty on U.S. coins, all of the symbolism and motif that you found on the classic coins that we all love. Vermeule tackles that subject and then some in this book. It's really a cultural history of American coinage. So to me, um, this is based, these are the building blocks. This is the, this is the Lego set that you need to uh, consider if you're going into these different areas. This is like, these are the cornerstones. After this, you start expanding based on your interests. I love FAO coins. I have an FAO coin guide, but that's not for everybody. If you like German coins, there's some great German coin books out there. If you uh, are collecting certain periods, there's great books out there. Uh, so never stop, uh, uh, never stop learning and uh, uh, and never hesitate to, to, to drop to drop that uh, extra bit of money on a book to really kind of figure out 
do I want to go in this direction? What coins do I want? Why do I want them? Uh, so uh, even a hundred, hundred and fifty dollar book can have such a, a, a fundamental impact on what you do for the rest of your coin collecting experience. So uh, most of the authors who create these products are not making a profit, um, and uh, you know they're covering their costs. They're not, they're not even covering their time really to put this stuff together, and so. Uh, by supporting numismatic authors, you're supporting the perpetuation of knowledge, you're supporting the growth of the coin industry, and who knows, you may just completely revolutionize uh, your approach to coin collecting, you may change it, you may decide, I never thought in a million years I'd want to collect Civil War tokens, but after reading this, I, I can't get enough of them. And that's the power of uh, some of the, the writing that you'll see. Uh, learn how to grade, learn how to identify coins, and, uh, and uh, once you have those two things down, you're off the races. So uh, have a good weekend, everybody. Uh, I promise uh, we got a, a podcast we're getting ready to record uh, with Jeff Shevlin. He's going to be calling me about an hour. So we'll try to have that up uh, for you tomorrow or Monday. And uh, we still have cool coins to upload. We had a little bit of problems with the production, but we've got it fixed now. So uh, that's what I got for you. Uh, happy shopping, happy reading, happy collecting. Have a happy weekend.